Welcome back to another episode of the 16 Game Editor. I'm going to just run through some sprite editing and see if that makes any sense to people. And we'll get to see all my bad sprite editing skills. So, um, so just to show you what it looks like right now, we'll just hit start and play. little legs. You can look up and down and that changes things as well. Um, yeah, so, oh and here's some other functionality I'm not sure if I've shown you. Um, I'm going to hit the fire button and what it's going to do is it's going to change the edge behavior of the sprite. So now he's afraid of edges and won't want to fall unless you jump off the edge. So, um, that's not really going to be super useful for players. Um, but it's going to be there for mostly for enemies, so they'll be, able, they'll be able to turn around or do that sort of thing when they kind of get to the edge of something. And the trick is getting down here. When you Okay, anyways, so that's kind of some of the new things there. Um, so, for example, let's see right now. Um, I did just pop this guy in front of that somehow. Okay. Not sure how. But, um, anyways, I saw something random, but you may have not caught it. But, even if you did, you'll maybe know what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's just kind of go through. If you hit. Uh, spacebar or select, so spacebar on a computer, select on the on a gamepad. You can kind of start kind of going through all the editing functionality of the the program and that sort of thing. So uh, this is the map that we currently have so far. Uh, for example, if I now hit X, I can I can edit this. So on a computer, X is not actually X; it's something like uh, E, but um, on a controller, it'll be X. So, I'm currently just running this on the emulator because it's easier to record that way. Okay, so what should I try and make? So, just kind of to show off some of the things that you can do, probably already showed you some things, but um, it's easy to paint. You can also fill the lines. Have, there's a certain bug in the filling routine. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, it's, it appears that most of the time it does. But um, if I knew why, I you know that's that's why you pay me the big bucks to figure this stuff out. Okay, so let's just start doing something. Again, I'm not a sprite artist. I'm kind of looking at a, some stuff on the OpenGameArt.org. But uh, I'm going to butcher it no matter what, so... Um, so, sure, let's do... Let's do a little bit of things here. A little bit of white, or sky, sky blue to kind of make this look a little friendly. Sure. Why not? Maybe it looks like a little ice cube now or something. Okay, so um, always remember to save. Oh, and here's something also interesting. So, um, well, what's a good way to show that? Um, well, we'll go edit an, uh, a sprite now. So that was a new tile, and why don't we figure out where we can put that in our map, for example. So if you hit spacebar enough, you'll get back to the main screen, unless you're stuck in a menu. But, um, okay, let's go and edit the map. So now you can see some of the sprites, or some of the tiles that were this blue guy are just now automatically that blue guy now. So um, we don't have to add any more in, but we can we'll just add some blue and red. And then when you kind of see it in action, you can kind of say, ah, oh, do I like it? Do I like it this way? Maybe, maybe not, who knows? It's okay, but always remember to save. So if you hit start and then A, you can save. 
the computer uh, or on a keyboard, D is how you save it. D is A. It's kind of confusing. Oh! Okay, so there I, I started a fill, which, um, there's technically, you can come back from a fill if you reload the, the game, but um, I kind of knew what it was supposed to look like, right? Now it's just an icy underworld here. Eventually it'll be something where you can show, make some tiles have certain weaknesses, and if you try to, oops, I wrapped, and if you you hit the block with your character or with another sprite that has that attack and can conquer that weakness, then, you know, that's the general idea with these sorts of games and stuff. Okay, so let's make a little cave here, that's kind of fun. Okay, and we'll kind of clear out some of this area too. Make it a little bit more interesting, or not. Okay. So we've just kind of been converting over some tiles. Let's look at uh, working on a sprite as well. Um, and then maybe we'll even try to make the sprite move around and be evil type of thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut and paste the sprite um, there. So you, when you have the cursor, you're in tile painting mode, but if you hit enter, or sorry, start, you can look at the sprites that are under your cursor. Okay, so for example, let's see, I can cut the sprite, or I can edit it, so I think, huh, okay, that was interesting. Some, you know, unknown functionality that I have in the, the code. Okay, so let's just, we'll go over that ourselves and go find it. I'm not sure what is going on. That's always a good sign, right? Okay, so let's let's go and start editing sprite one. Okay. So I probably should have a nice a less evil thing so you can just clear it immediately. Or maybe I can have a extra button to do that. I can't really even fill this because uh, they're all different points. So this is supposed to be a sprite, so maybe you should try to make an enemy, or I could make player two type of thing. Um, what should we what should we aim for? A giant bottle of Pepto Bismol. This uh, that's a registered trademark and all that. Also doing this to see how easy it is to work on these codes and and run the actual game editor. I see things that it'd be nice to have, for example. So one of the things that I did make it, this is just going from bad to worse. But um, we we started with it, we have to finish it. That's kind of how it works in life. We made the bed. It's time to lock it. So, there's nice little shortcuts. For example, if you if you want to get a, a certain color on your, you know, to to color with, you can hit X on the the thing that you want, and then the, the currently activated um, drawing thing, so you can use B and Y to draw. Um, that will then become the, the color that uh, was under the cursor. Okay, that doesn't look very good. Maybe 
this guy looks pretty evil right now. So, um, so always remember to save. I'll hit start and then A to save. Um, another thing that we should do is, um, I'm not sure why block appears here, but if you go high enough up, you can choose what color is invisible in that sprite. So for example, we kind of want the upper right and upper left corners to be kind of, uh, white was our kind of background color. So that's going to be invisible in the real world. That is if I um, have done this somewhat correctly. Um, I'm actually curious. I think I have to do that with um, this guy as well. So the other sprite, I hadn't saved the correct background color, which is something that I was mentioning earlier in coded language. Okay, so now we've, we can see the main hero here at sprite zero, um, but I'm also going to look at sprite one is this new green guy with the pink suit. So some of the things you can do, you can copy it um, and then paste it, copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste. So what you can kind of see as I'm going left and right with uh, L and R, I'm cycling the sprite. Um, so it starts off at R0 is kind of the frame zero of moving right animation. R1 would be frame one of that um, moving right animation. So zero and one get looped. So for example, we kind of want to change that. Um, oh, so that's interesting. So this is something I should add on the the color is not automatically saving when you paste in something, so that's something to put on the to-do list. Then we always want white, at least for this bright, to be effectively the background color. So up and down aren't used too much in a platformer, but you can still look up and look down by pressing up or down, depending on how you've coded in your sprite sprite things. Okay, so I've gone too far. Okay, so sprite sprite one. Now we're gonna look at making an animation. So let's edit uh, the the second frame or frame one. This is gonna make me uh, let me let me do a few things and then maybe I'll talk philosophy. that this will look good, but we will try it. Okay, so this guy is going to kind of jump, and maybe we'll make this thing move up and down. Hopefully that won't look awkward. Okay. Save to file. Okay, so what we can do is see if some of these things are actually working the way they're supposed to. So, for example, this is the infinite loop that you can't really get out of. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, no wonder. Okay, so I need to fix something. There's some bounds checking that isn't going on. I was wondering what tile I was. Tile I is just some random code somewhere. That would be bad to change that random memory somewhere, I shouldn't say code. Okay, so let's get out of here. Um, do we have, whoops, something you want to try to avoid doing is when you're in the map menu to press up and down because that'll change the, the width and the height of your map, which is good if you want to do that, but not always the best if you don't want to do that. Okay, so I do want to cut that sprite, cut it out, and I want to go back and put in our new green alien person. Okay, so let's just save that. And just to be safe, we're gonna save everything. Okay, so there is, right now there's no collision detection. drawn in for that sprite. 
So that's always good to uh, get to know that something's working like that. Okay, so those enemies are a little bit boring. Uh, well, no matter if they're boring or not, they're going to be non-threatening because uh, right now you can't run into them. But let's at least give them something to do. So we're going to edit the patterns, the sprite patterns. Okay, so for sprite one, all right, so I was, I haven't done this for a while, but I'm sure we'll find something interesting to do. Okay, so let's just say if you're not in the air, we're going to do something. Um, we're just going to go on to command three. Command three, we're going to do something where we, some of these don't actually work just yet. Um, Okay, so we do kind of want to set the move speed, and maybe we want to set the jump speed as well. Depends on if the enemy is supposed to jump or not. Okay. So maybe we want to walk, and... Oh yeah, and we also want to change our behavior so that you turn around at edges. We'll see, I'm not even sure if this works correctly yet, but we shall find out. Yeah, I'm actually really, really not sure. Okay. Well, that's uh, something, if it's not in the air, it's going to go set the move speed, set the jump speed, it's going to walk, and it's going to turn 180 degrees whenever it hits an edge. Okay, so let's see if that actually... Oh! Oh my goodness, that didn't... Well, anyway, let's go back in and change some of the animation so we'll see it no matter what. Um, here we are. So we'll go into the sprite menu. We're going to copy the right one and put that over at left one as well. Okay, so let's save that. Hmm. Okay. Ah, okay. I'm going to set up the file. Okay, well, there's just more. Just for the interested, right now I'm only updating the frames. I'm making the player move or move their feet whenever certain input is put into the like, jumping or uh, moving left or right. Actually, it's only when it's left or right or up or down. But um, so if I just tell it to walk in a certain direction, it's not gonna um, it's not gonna update the frames and make an animation. But what we can do, if we want to be lazy, we're just to show off how this does look. Um, we're going to copy over sprite 1 and how it behaves. And then we're just going to gonna play the game. So now you can see that this guy... Anyways, um, that's just kind of some things, new things to show, show off. But um, yeah, thanks for watching.